Good morning, Barry. Very good question, and I thought I'd make a video on this to assist you. Uh, not only on this Bomatic heat pump tumble dryer uh, will I go through the workshop manual with you to assist you in gaining access to the capacitor, but I'll also go through the error code procedure and diagnostic mode on this machine just for other people in the future while I'm making this video. Uh, first thing we need to do is have a look at how to gain access to the capacitor and I'll put links in the description below to anything that I think is relevant and also for the part for your tumble dryer. So let's go through to the workshop manual. Uh, Bomatic firstly is manufactured by the Hire Group uh, which is basically Hoover Candy. Uh, they've been taken over by Hire now. Uh, the workshop manual is a pretty basic manual. It only shows you the layout of the machine. So the first diagram that comes up is basically how to take the lid and cabinet assembly apart and listing the part numbers for these. These part numbers that you can see on the screen here are only part numbers leading you to the part list which will then give you the full part number for your machine and that will be up on the screen in a minute as well. So we have 49 is the first one that you need to take off. This actually is the back trim, which allows you access to the panel, which is uh, 51. That will then slide out, and then you'll be able to remove part number 48 and 48A, which are the two plastic trims that hold the lid assembly on. Then you'll need to gain access to the screws on 85. Now, according to my memory here, and it's been a while since I've worked on one of these heat pump ones, uh, I think you've got to take the front panel off the machine, but you may be lucky that the side panel comes off without taking the front panel off, because it is a bit more work. But there will be some screws located at the top. Uh, there's also a couple of screws behind the facial panel, at the front of the machine and there's also some screws at the bottom behind the condenser plate. Uh, also you've got a couple of screws or location lugs at the bottom for the panel to sit in and there will also be screws at the back. Now this is the panel uh, part number 1026 and 706 is basically the plastic assembly behind the front facial panel and the reason I'm pointing this out now is because we have some screws on the front panel that will have to be screwed into this panel and it's very important to keep these separate. So let me just go down to the actual front panel assembly. You will have to remove the facial panel and that has the program built into it so you may need to disconnect the wiring. Uh, if you disconnect the wiring, I do recommend taking some photographs so you know where the wires come from. The door assembly should have to come off with the hinge, so it's just the hinge that you will need to undo, remove the whole door assembly, and then behind the panel here, you've got maybe five or six screws which go into that other panel that I was talking about. Do keep them separate, because when removing this, uh, those screws are designed to go into plastic and they're very different from the other screws on the machine. Then you've got a couple of screws at the top uh, of the panel and you should have some at the bottom of the panel as well. Then you'll be able to remove the front panel after removing the door lock assembly. And again, um, if any wires uh, are on this, do be careful when taking this off because sometimes this door lock is a bit tricky to get off and it's a very tight fit behind the panel. Uh, next we'll go down to, this is the drum assembly, nothing to do with what you've got to work on. And then here you can see the motor assembly plus the compressor and the condensing unit. Now the manual here is a bit vague with which is the capacitor of your machine because it is listing 156 that you can see on top of the motor which is where I suspected the run capacitor to be but when I looked in the list of parts which I'll show you in a minute it didn't explain or didn't have listed that part number so 156 is not listed but when we go into the next diagram, you can see 868, which is actually showing as a capacitor as well. 
and when we go into the parts list you can see 156 is not vis uh, sorry 176 is not visible but 868 is actually showing on the system and that is 868 run capacitor and that is part number 41043 444. Uh, I'll put a link to that capacitor and also the size of the capacitor up on the screen in a minute for you. Uh, next we've got the workshop wiring diagram which gives you all the colour configuration of the wiring and to where each wire goes on the circuit board to the actual individual components. There's two wiring diagrams for this. You've got this one and also this one so i'm i think they're both the same but they may be slightly different for variations of serial numbers or whatever um, then the manual just has got the installation uh, instructions for installation of the machine uh, which are very basic uh, we'll just quickly flick through them you can press pause if you want to read anything on this uh, there's only 38 pages but what we want to go into now is the diagnostic procedure. But I just thought I'd pop that all up on the screen for other people. Now, as I said, the instructions for the error codes and diagnostic procedure are designed to point you in the right direction of the fault. And as I said to you right at the beginning of this, I would be in interested to know if you do have an error code stored into your machine because the error code list does not show a motor error code. So we'll quickly just go through this. You can press pause at any time. And this shows you the test initialization and also how to enter the test program procedure using a mobile phone because i believe this has got a bluetooth or wi-fi access um, but really on page five we have a list of the error codes now the error codes point you in the direction of what the fault is like error code e03 then you've got e05 which is an ntc sensor fault or a heating fault then you've got error code e07 e08 e010 e011 and on the next page we've got e uh, sorry e12 e13 e14 e15 e19 and e21 e22 none of these actually show a motor error fault so i would be interested to know if you do have an error code stored in your machine i hope you found this helpful and informative please remember to click the like and subscribe button as that really helps our channel and i'll put all links for you in the description below Thanks very much indeed for watching, Barry.